fighting game like no other is about to enter the ring. With graphics, unlike anything we have seen before. Uh, the first time I tried this game on the arcade, I couldn't believe my eyes. And game mechanics, unheard of. The spirit bar is what you need to execute your special moves. Witness the birth and evolution of a franchise. They iterated on everything they did right on the previous game. That will change the fighting game's genre forever. Yoko no Ken, Art of Fighting. With good reception of the first game, SNK knew they had something special and decided to greenlit a sequel only a couple weeks after the release of the first game. Work on Auto Fighting 2 was underway, while at the same time, another SNK team was working on a new franchise that will also introduce new gameplay elements such as team versus team fighting mechanics. SNK took the criticism it received in the first game to heart and decided early on to focus on a bigger roster and one playable in both single and multiplayer modes. Changes on how the game unfolds were also introduced. In fact, early on the team decided to focus less on the game's story and more on the versus aspect, so the game developers spent more time on balancing the roster than adding story details. It was the expansion of the ideas that were implemented in Art of Fighting 1. While the team initially wanted all of the first game's roster to make a comeback, they ultimately decided to drop Todo from the sequel. Returning from the first Art of Fighting were of course Ryo and Robert, looking more detailed than ever. Jack, Mickey, who now looks more like Muhammad Ali, less than himself, John, Lee, King, and Mr. Big, the first game sub-boss. Four new characters were introduced to the series with Art of Fighting 2, Yuri, Takuma, Eiji Kisaragi, and Temjin. Yuri Sakazaki, Ryo's sister who was the main plot point of the first game. During development, various concept art for Yuri Sakazaki were made, before deciding on what would be known as her classic outfit. Unlike other new characters, more was done on Yuri's personality likes and dislikes, and even friends. In fact, three never-before-seen female characters were created as Yuri's best friends. Part-time model with relatively masculine personality, a quiet girl who is good at studying and somewhat sickly, and a child about 10 years old who thinks of Yuri as her big sister. None of these characters were ever seen outside of these concept arts. Takuma Sakazaki, Mr. Karate, now revealed to be Ryon Yuri's dad Takuma, makes his playable debut in the game. Art of Fighting 2 reveals that Takuma was forced to work for Geese as Mr. Karate, as Geese threatened to kill Yuri and Ryo. Now seeing that his children can take care of themselves, Takuma takes the fight back to Geese and Mr. Big with the help of his children, as well as Robert and King. Eiji Kisaragi Eiji Kisaragi's design reason was to create a new flashy character. Eiji is a ninja from the feared and respected Kisaragi clan, sworn to be the strongest enders of the heavens. He made it his goal to defeat that one school his clan has not yet surpassed, the Kyoko Genryu Karate Dojo. Temjin With Temjin, the developers wanted to create a new lovable character pure of heart. He's a Mongolian dock worker at the South Town Port, he entered the tournament solely to make enough money to help a school back in his home country. Didn't we say pure of heart? While Mr. Big still fills the role of the final boss of the game under most circumstances, if the player is able to reach the final boss without losing a match, he will then fight the true real boss of the game. A young version of Geese Howard, the final boss of Fatal Fury 1, since the events of Auto Fighting were originally presented as a prequel to the Fatal Fury series. Besides updated characters, the graphics were a noticeable upgrade from the previous one, which was already considered the pinnacle of Neo Geo sprites. The characters were more detailed and the stages busier with more colors and life. In terms of gameplay, not much was changed as the basic game mechanics remained the same. Subtle changes were made to the bonus stages. 
This time, the bonus stages are reworked to increase the rage gauge. In this case, the player's character has to chop down a tree with one punch to increase the maximum health meter. The player's character must also defeat a number of punks under a certain time limit. And the Initiate Super Death Blow stage is now reworked and adapted for each of the character's super special moves. It's a great game. They just took everything that worked well in the previous game and they made it better. Auto Fighting 2 was released on February 1994 for both the Neo Geo MVS and AES to great reception and reviews. Heku Mega Shock Neo Geo! The game was praised by both GamePro and Electronic Gaming Monthly for having far better graphics, sound, character selection and gameplay techniques than the original Auto Fighting. But while most reviewers agreed on how the game has improved, they also unanimously agree that the AI of the game is brutal. And boy were they right. To this day, Auto Fighting 2 might be the most difficult fighting game on the Neo Geo library. Even if you choose the easy difficulty, the Art of Fighting 2 CPU will still kick your ass. And of course the CPU being unforgiving as usual, would just slap you about and you, you probably, the average person would not get past uh, second or third character. It's just, yeah, it's just a no. Unlike the first game, Art of Fighting 2 will only receive one port outside of the Neo Geo family, and that is on the Super Nintendo. Released in December 1994, the port will keep all of the characters and features of the original, but with a slight downgrade in graphics and sprite details and size. To celebrate the release of Art of Fighting 2, mangaka Etsuya Amajishi was hired again to make a sequel to his successful Art of Fighting manga. The new manga would span two volumes and would adapt the events of Art of Fighting 2. Art of Fighting 2 was a success, and its great reception from fans and publications gave SNK the incentive to greenlight a sequel shortly after the game's release. But this time, SNK wanted to try something different, something bold and revolutionary. Both Art of Fighting 1 and 2 were the pinnacle of their times in terms of graphics, but SNK was ready to take things to the next level as they introduced motion capture technology to 2D pixel art, something never before seen. The results are smooth and detailed animation, which is exactly what SNK used to wow its fans about the upcoming Ryoko no Ken Gaiden, or as it is known outside of Japan, Art of Fighting 3 Path of the Warrior. Art of Fighting 3, it has amazing animations, the, the characters are, you know, they have way too many frames of animation, the, the backgrounds are actually beautiful. Visuals were not the only major change for Art of Fighting 3. SNK decided to completely revamp the series by only bringing back Kryo and Robert from the previous games and adding 8 new characters including a sub-boss and a final boss. These characters are Kasumi Todo, daughter of Ryuhaku Todo from the first game. Upon learning that her father was defeated at the hand of Ryo Sakazaki, she decided to avenge his defeat and sets on a journey to find and defeat Ryo. Carmen Cole a longtime employee of the Garcia family. He was sent by Robert's parents to look for their son when he went missing looking for his childhood friend Freya. Lenny Crescent. Lenny is a suffering journalist who is constantly looking for the next big thing. 
She learned through her sources that the final boss Waller was looking for a lady named Freya Lawrence. Seeing this as the scoop she needed, she decided to personally track down Freya and get the information she needs for her article. Rody Birch, a bounty hunter and partner of Lenny Creston, who has been hired by her to find Freya. Both he and Lenny seem to have rather poor professional reputations. He fights with Tomfaz and is believed to be a former police officer. Jin Fuha, a former student of Eiji Kisaragi. His master betrayed him and left a scar in his chest. Jin now seeks revenge. Wang Ko Sun, a friend of Lee Pai Long from the previous games. Wang is an artist who is looking for inspiration. He practices Shi Ni Liu Hui Quan and has interest in the final boss mysterious elixir. Saint Clair, a mystery character that works for the final boss Wilder. She uses her power to control her weapon from a distance and can create energy copies of her sword. Wilder, the final boss of the game and a character clearly inspired by the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde tale, Wilder is working on a mysterious elixir which can turn him into a formidable beast. Story-wise, the game setting was quite different from the previous titles as it shifted focus from the Sakazaki to the Garcia family. Robert disappears to search for an old childhood friend, Freya Lawrence, and he tracks her to Glass Hill, Mexico. Freya is wanted by the game's main antagonist, Waller, to complete a powerful elixir that was created by his and Freya's fathers. Besides the fluid animation and reasonable difficulty, the gameplay of Auto Fighting 3 also saw a drastic change. The fights feel a tad bit more realistic. While maintaining combos and juggles, the action now includes a parry system, known as redirection, activated by tapping back and C. Players can also hit grounded enemies, which was not possible in previous games. Characters can also easily stumble or fall during matches. Normal attacks are now more varied as they can be performed by combining A and B or C with different directions of the stick. Another major gameplay aspect that was new to SNK games is hopping. The characters now can jump at different heights depending on how long the player keeps holding the joystick for jumping. This gameplay mechanic will go on to become a staple for the King of Fighters series. Auto Fighting 3 has tons of special moves, including desperations and super desperation moves. Speaking of SDMs, the game introduced a concept of ultimate KO. When players finish an opponent with a desperation move and that opponent has 10% life or less, it counts as an ultimate KO. An ultimate KO leads to the win of the entire match, even if performed during the first round. Unlike its predecessor, Auto Fighting 3 adapts a linear story, similar to the first game of the franchise. And unlike the previous games, we no longer had bonus stages and the players no longer needed to learn the powerful desperation moves in those minigames in order to execute them. Another unique and interesting thing about Auto Fighting 3 is the special day system. Each character from the roster has their own unique birthday. When playing the game on that specific day, that character will always be raged even above 20% life. All these changes, while sounding good on paper, bring many problems with them. For one thing, opponents were frequently known to fall down which would break the flow of combat. Some physics felt off and the game balance was all over the place. I feel that this game was a little bit ahead of its time and like many of the cases where something similar happens, whoever is ahead of its time is not well received. As expected by many who saw the game early, Auto Fighting 3 received mainly negative reviews upon its release on March 12, 1996. Unrecognizable roster, an interesting story, and odd gameplay changes were to blame. Add to that the fact that SNK was getting ready to launch the King of Fighters 96, a game that was supposed to overhaul the popular series in an even better way. Reviews were not forgiven either. Electronic Gaming Monthly gave the Neo Geo AES version a 5 out of 10. They lambasted the game for its poor balance. They further criticized that the game lacks originality and innovation, failing to distinguish itself from the deluge of 2D fighting games coming out at the time. The poor reception of Auto Fighting 3 led to SNK's decision to not port the game on any console outside of Neo Geo AES. After three games in the series, and with the last one ill-received, 
and with the company seeing massive success with its King of Fighters series, SNK decided to put Art of Fighting on hiatus and focus on its flagship yearly released series. In 1997, SNK released its next generation arcade board, the Hyper Neo Geo 64, with a plan to take the fighting game genre to the next level. Both Samurai Shodan 64 and later Fatal Fury Wild Ambition saw a modest reception, and many speculated that Auto Fighting was next to make its awaited return on the new hardware. Rumors went around at the time that an early prototype of an Art of Fighting game was seen, but to this day I cannot confirm the rumor, as no image or information about the supposed Art of Fighting reboot for Hyper Neo Geo 64 were seen. Under the new SNK Playmore banner, and with the company's shift to focus on pachinko slot machines, an Art of Fighting pachinko game was released. Featuring some jaw-dropping anime cutscenes, the game was a retelling of the first two games. <laughs> While there were no dedicated auto fighting games since Auto Fighting 3, the main characters of the series continued to thrive and be an important part of the company's flagship, the King of Fighters series. Ryo Roberts, Yuri, King, and Takuma have become an essential part of any good King of Fighters roster. Even other companies recognize the major contributions of the Art of Fighting series to the genre. Capcom, for example, famous for the insanely popular Street Fighter franchise, wanted to give homage to the game and also poke some fun by creating a character that looks like a combination of Ryo and Robert. I am of course talking about Dan Hibiki, who made his debut in Street Fighter Alpha. Dan looks like Robert but wears clothes like Ryo only in pink. Even his moves are inspired by the SNK duo. Dan was also a way to poke some fun at Ryo, who was seen at the time of Art of Fighting 1 as a combination of Ryu and Ken from Street Fighter. It would have seemed that SNK stopped seeing the potential in the Art of Fighting franchise, as even now with a resurrected SNK that is slowly regaining its title of King of Fighting Games companies, no interest has been shown to resurrect the series. Uh, I hope that at least the events of the first and second game are uh, retold in a more modern way. Art of Fighting is a very particular and unique game and I don't really think it has a future right now. SNK has always been known for taking risks, but I don't think this is a risk worth taking at this moment in time. Auto Fighting was for SNK uh, a test field where they could try a lot of things. A lot of Auto Fighting ideas were used again in other games. So it's, I think it was their test field. They could just do what they want, how they can imagine things, without really thinking about balancing or about gameplay, game system. So that's why you, can't, you don't see those games back again. You don't see many like Auto Fighting 2 or 3 tournaments. While the gameplay of auto fighting is certainly a difficult style to implement in today's fighting games genre, one thing is for sure, these games and characters have certainly left their mark on the world of SNK and that of fighting games, and while they might not have their own game anytime soon, we will definitely be seeing them in other titles. I hope you guys enjoyed the series and I would like you to know that I am working on more history of SNK documentaries. The next one will be the history of Fatal Fury and followed by a higher budget history of the King of Fighters, a documentary that will be filmed in Japan next year. If you want to know more and would like to help in the making of this historical series, check out the GoFundMe page in the link in the description below. I would also like to thank my patrons Felipe Guimara and Refugio Robles for supporting me on Patreon. Those of you who are interested in becoming patron and get exclusive and early access to content, check out my Patreon page in the link in the description below. 
Now, until next time, don't forget to like and subscribe, and stay safe.